Taking attendance, um, I'm making sure that it marks someone here uh, absent. Uh, people I have absent are uh, Cadence, Jesus, Alexis, uh, Jude, and Isaiah. What about me? He's back here. Okay. <laughs> So, what monsters have we created? <laughs> no 
already saw how we sometimes think about that. Yeah, because there's, there's so many possibilities. Yes, Ethan. Uh, it, it, would, uh, it would like eat and like get rid of trash, like in the world. So that, uh, oh, nice. So it, you know, there's no much trash there. So, yeah, that's very productive, you know, getting rid of all, all the yeah, trash. Exactly. That's really good. Really good answer. Um, where, where, where would you live? Uh, I don't know. Somewhere like, somewhere like deep in the ocean so that nobody would find it. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Now we don't want to try to like take it in their lab. And, yeah. So that's, that's your creation. Yes, Michaela. I was going to say that ocean is like the bottom of the ocean. It's terrifying. So, um, do you like the people that are made with like teeth or something? Oh, nice. Like a vampire mermaid? Vampire mermaid? Oh, that'd be awesome. I mean, like, I can't talk about it. No, it's okay. No, that, that's really good. I, I, that, is, that is really smooth. I might, yeah. might use that in some of my creative writing. That's really cool. Okay. Like, see how it, they like come together. 
Yeah, good. Yeah, so no, you're right. We're, we're taking the concept of symbolism and connecting it or comparing it to uh, objects that we are seeing in, in the story. Very good. So, um, uh, so first we're going to review symbolism first, and then following that we'll go deeper more into like the actual story of what we've read from the prologue to part five. Um, so, uh, can anyone tell me in their own words, because uh, I was told that, and you're senior, so you should know what symbolism is. What what is symbolism? If you were going to explain it to me, like I'm like I'm five. Um, it's like something that like shows something that's not without like actually kind of saying it. Yeah, good. So um, it's there's no direct meaning. It's something's implied. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good, good. Adam, anyone else? Anyone would like to add on that? So it's implied. Yeah. Different meanings. And based on what we're reading, um, the, the meaning will change. And it's usually an object, right? Good. Um, so an example, <laughs> a little funny story. So uh, my mom actually she doesn't she makes a joke about symbolism because to her uh, and she reads some. Well, actually it was my sister who read a story that involved the blue curtain, and she's like, no, sometimes the blue curtain is just a blue curtain because they're spending essays and essays on this curtain, and my mom was frustrated that Sarah was had to work hours. My sister Sarah had to work hours on analyzing a curtain, but here in this English class, everything like. You can take an object and try to find the meaning behind it. So the blue curtain really does have a meaning. So let's I'm going to draw a really crappy curtain. I'm, this is why I'm not an art teacher. Uh, here we go. So we have the curtain here. We have the window. So let's look at the color first. Um, what does so colors have their usually like implied emotion to it. What does what does blue have? Shout out. Sadness. sadness, yeah, good. Um, so sadness, depression, uh, melancholy, and like the darker the blue, the more depressed they are. Calm, that could be another one, calm and tranquil, yeah. So the character who's describing and using this curtain, that would be calm, sad, maybe both, like maybe pensive, a little bit thoughtful. Good, awesome. Um, so we talked about the color. Uh, we also like are spending so much time on the curtain, so clearly something is on this character's mind, right? Um, look how long it is, and how like how it's being drawn out. So maybe this character in the story of the blue curtain is likes to draw things out and like split over explain. That could be another thing, right? So that's just another another example, um, and we're going to have plenty of examples today to look at. Um, questions, comments, concerns, thumbs up, thumbs down, are we understanding so far? Maybe sideways too, or maybe. Well, I'm seeing thumbs up. Awesome. Uh, also, for my expectations for the rest of the lecture, I'm not seeing it now, um, but I'm not expecting any phones out and texting. Um, and for the rest of the notes um, that are underlined, I'm going to want you to take notes on that, so make sure you have a set of word document. Okay, so let's practice a little bit. Um, let's. Okay, there we go. So, what does this symbol make you think of? McDonald's. McDonald's. Good. Yes. Um, let's talk about the the, the colors or, or the shape, right? What is, what is the shape? Um, right. So, um, for McDonald's, there's that overarch, right? What about the colors? Red and yellow? Oh, um, yeah. Are they are they dark? Are they bright? Yellow. Bright. Well, they're both primary. Very bright. Bright. Yeah. So primary colors. So they, they would definitely stand out. The brightness, uh, like the shade, can represent like that emotion of some sort of happiness, right? Do we know why it's red? Like why did McDonald's choose red? Well, not exactly. I mean, I see that. There's yeah. actual studies that show that red is a color that makes people more hungry. So if you start looking at other like fast food places or like um, a lot of packaging at the store, we'll have red on it because red entices 
hunger in human brains for whatever reason. So, it, for, for whatever reason. Um, so if you look at, like I said, if you go to the store and look at a bunch of packaging, a lot of them will incorporate red, yellow, oranges, things like that. Look at the next time you're at the store. That color makes you hungry. That makes sense though. That's why they put like red glasses on chickens when they fight. <laughs> I have no idea why they do that. But like, think about other fast food. Wendy's, red and orange, right? Chick-fil-A, red and orange. Five Guys, red and orange. Smashburger, the logo is red. All of them use that color and now, because as well. scientifically, Kings, yep. they're to prompt you Kings. to make so good. more. Uh, That's uh, interesting. I never thought of it like that. Like, low key, it's expensive, yeah, for sure. Kings is expensive. Yeah, but, there's I mean, a lot though. Yeah, so, yeah, red is hunger. We've got yellow for like joy, happiness. Just look at it. Good. Uh, first hour mentioned about, you know, the tune. They get stuck in our heads. Uh, so, when we see the symbol, we think of the tune. What about. Oh, the crown, yeah. Yeah. Also for joy, but that, that's it's an interesting choice. Uh, it's a little outdated, in my opinion. Um, what about this symbol? Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, where are the thoughts and feelings that we're getting from this symbol? Just do it? Yeah, so the slogan, just, you know, just do it. It's right there. What else? Air Forces? Okay, let's that one a little bit. Oh, okay, awesome. Yeah, so yeah, there, there's certain kind of uh, brand. Good. Oh, my battery's running low, so. One second. Charger. So, as I'm doing this, um, what are uh, some other symbols that we are thinking of? Like in our movies, in our. Uh... Is it uh, the Warner? Yeah, Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers, yeah. Right, the WB. That is something as well, because, like, they're the ones who found it in. When we see it, we think of Looney Tunes. Um, that's, a, that's a little bit outdated as well, but you know, DC Comics, basically movies and oh, thank you. And then <laughs> next symbol, these three. What do we think of? Video games, yeah, PlayStation, Xbox, and one middle switch, right? What are human feelings that we're thinking about with this? Anger. Competition, yeah, there we go. Anger, <laughs> road rage, yeah, or not road rage, but just, yeah, the, the quit rage. Rage quit, thank you. Yes. Good, uh, so we have that, and this is the last one. What do we think? There, I'll give you a hint, it's not one entire symbol, it's two symbols combined together. Yeah. <laughs> Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah, Star Wars, yeah. Yeah, so we have the Jedi Order, the Separatists. This is more specifically the Rebels and Empire. But yeah, you're on the right track, right? Right, but yeah, you, that, that was on the right track. So what do we think about when we see this? Rivalry. Good. Space. Space. Fate. Fate, yeah, fantasy. Good versus evil, yeah, that division. Good. So, yeah, Logan, Nick, and Will said some really good things about that. Um, so, like we we're showing here, everything that we can see, every like object, um, has some sort of meaning, and we associate that object with with either like an emotion or a memory, something like that. And that's you know that's how we define that object. We already talked about that here. I'm gonna give you a couple minutes, about uh, maybe a minute to get the. Uh, no, but um, these notes will be really good for what we're doing today. So I highly, highly encourage you to take In the context of literature, we discussed how uh, in one book the, an object can mean something, uh, in another book in, uh, that same object can mean something else entirely. So it's based on context um, of, of the story itself. 
So we have the swastika, um, both in Book Thief and you know, historical fiction, um, or just history in general. Um, so for the swastika, we have Liesel, um, and we have going against Hitler and the Nazi party, and also another world out, um, context would be Buddhists, and they see it completely, like the complete one opposite, you know, like that's a symbol of peace. But this is being used for something else. So Liesel sees it as the tyrannical monster, which is Hitler taking from other due to being, um, or being accused of being a uh, communist. And then you have the Nazis who see it as power and glory, you know, that phrase earlier in the book, Germany over everything, that propaganda, right? That's that pride there. Questions, comments, concerns? Okay. So I also provided some other common symbols in the book thief. Uh, this would include books, um, such as the Grave Diggers Handbook, Food, and Hans Accordion. So now we're going to look, let's look at an object in this classroom together and figure out um, like the steps in, in analyzing it. But before that, we're going to look at why we use symbolism. And I'll give you a couple minutes to work on that as well. All right, it's okay if you're still typing, um, but I'm going to get started. Um, so we've um, mentioned how symbolism adds layers and depth to writing, right? Um, there's, there's always a purpose for something like repetitive in an object that's being described. Usually that's really important to the characters. Um, and each symbol has the denotation and connotation. Now, I think it was reviewed earlier in the, in the year what these are, but we're going to go over this again as a, as a reminder. Um, using the word ratchet. The denotation is like the literal definition of said object, right? It's what, what is what we see, right? And connotation is cultural meaning or what we think of first when we use this word. So looking at the word ratchet, let's start with the connotation. When I call someone ratchet, what am I, what am I saying to them? Okay, wait, I heard ugly? Okay, ugly, good. What else? Ghetto, yeah, I'm not gonna write that, but. No, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. ghetto. Yeah. <laughs> but, well, that's true, that's exactly what we're expecting. Manners, yeah, so they're, they're not polite. I'll put that down. Yeah, what'd you say back? Trashy. Trashy, Trashy? Trashy? good, yep. yes. So yeah, we, we have a good idea of what when we, we, we I call someone ratchet or if I am ratchet. These are the things that screws. Video game character. Okay, yeah. So for some people, <laughs> some people it's a like a video game. I think it's a fox. Like, yeah, ratchet. <laughs> okay, so taking taking that, we're going to look at the denotation or the, uh, the exact definition. Can um, someone go ahead and? Go on the internet and find me a picture of a ratchet. On the way there. Okay. You know, pull up like the little tool. Yeah, it's a tool. Yeah. Good. So, Kira, Chino. Is this a lot of areas that say ratchet? Yeah. 
That tool that's being used, right? Good. So we have the denotation, we have the connotation, and this is important to know is because that these two are two different things and using the same word or same object. All right. Uh, questions, comments, concerns, thumbs up, thumbs down on denotation, connotation. Do we understand the difference now? The difference between the two? So we're going to ask you to start sort of doing this. Um, so what you're thinking now is, is a synonym. Um, it, 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 it's the same idea where like a word can have two different meanings, but in this case it's more like we have a word that we have an actual definition for, right? If you look up ratchet in the in the dictionary, it's going to tell you the little tool that you used to that Chino used to fix his time film, right? But if we talk about what we uh, whenever we talk about the word ratchet. What does that mean if you call someone ratchet, right? That is the connotation. And so we've given it a cultural meaning. We're not saying that the person that we call ratchet is the tool that Gino uses, right? We're saying that they're ugly, not polite, and trashy, right? So we've given the word ratchet a new meaning, kind of like slang, right? When we say something is lit, right, or something like no cap, that's all, there, there's a definition for that word, but that's different than the way that you guys use that as slang. See how that works? Yeah, I got you. Cool. So another way I, think, I like to think about it is the notation uh, starts with T, so that's uh, de diction, uh, dictionary definition. C, connotation, cultural meaning. So that would be like explaining word, how, how you're using words. OK. So moving on to that, we, we are making connections using some all right, so these are the three steps in creating or analyzing a symbol. So the first thing is you need to identify it. Where is it? What is it? And how often is it used? Okay. Uh, little characteristics. What is what is on this object? Um, what are the colors? What are the shapes? And um, how, like, how does it feel? Things like that. Then the abstract uh, concept connections is how you're connecting both the denotation and the connotation and tying it in to the significance of the story or the novel. All right, I'll give you a few seconds to write the uh, annoying steps. So you just want to write the word, you don't have to write the definition. Yeah, um, uh, when we work on the project today, I'm also going to write it on the slide as well. So you just have to write the Okay, so now taking these steps, um, we're going to look at something in the classroom and uh, follow on. What? Nothing? Okay. Sorry, that's a question. Okay, so let's look at the flag right over there, the American flag. Okay, what do we see on the flag? What are the characteristics? So we're looking for denotation. Right, yeah, so stars, we got the stripes. Okay, what is the exact definition of the flag? Like, what is it? The flag. Okay, so yeah, that's the American flag, right? What, what's the definition of a flag? Okay, yeah, so the flag in the dictionary, what would it say? Yeah, we're, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves, so that's good, yeah. Let's go back a little bit. Yeah, a normal, normal flag. Good, yeah, so. 
Yeah, so good. We're looking at like a, a dictionary definition, and Adam said it's a clock that represents something. Um, so we have we have that there. Um, That's what step one, identify. So that we're, we're identifying it there. It's the first step. Next step, we're going into uh, the characteristics. So we talked about the stripes. We talked about the stars. Um, and, and the colors. What are, what are the colors? Red, white, and blue. Good. So those are the little literal characteristics. So that's step two in step our two. analysis process. Okay. Now, now we're going into step three, which is now we're going to talk about what the stars and stripes and red, white, and blue represent. So let's let's go over the shapes first. What would we think the? And I'm I'm accepting guesses. So you, you can be wrong as long as you can like support it. Um, what what do we think the stars represent? 50 states, good, yeah. States of the Union. What about the uh, stripes? Colonies. Original 13 colonies, good. All right, and now moving on to colors. Um, you can raise your hand and uh, choose one of the colors and tell me its significance. It, it doesn't have to be right, like I'm not looking for a right answer. Yes, people. Why do you think we have red? Let's start with red. To make you hungry. Oh, <laughs> to make you hungry. hungry. <laughs> what? Like, does that stand for what? Always hungry. <laughs> America's always hungry. Yeah. Oh, like, taking what we <laughs> did earlier. Good. Okay. What else? Blood. Yeah, it could, it, it could be because uh, bloodshed, like you know, fallen soldiers. Yeah. yeah good. Revolutionary War. Yeah. What about white? Peace. Yeah. It's white is often used for peace. Yeah, okay, white so white me freedom. And we're using that red to get that freedom. Like colors, but they had what they just reworking the colors in the great Okay, yeah, that's yeah, the point that's why it's the red, white, blue, it's just the reworking of the black that they already had. You have a point there, but like but also Great Britain they have their own meaning context of uh, uh the answer is <laughs> I don't know why it's been glitching all day today. <laughs> All right, so there's that two. All right, let's continue on. So we have red and white. What about blue? Liberty. liberty. Good. Yeah, yeah. So we have liberty. Um, so I like what you guys uh, like your guesses because you're taking your past experiences and you're using that to back up um, why, why you think those colors mean those things. So we were right with the shapes. Um, we have the stripes, which are the original 13 colonies, and the stars, which is the 50 states of the Union. Um, red usually signifies the hardiness and valor, so like the fallen soldiers, you know, we respect our soldiers for fighting for and persevering for what we believe uh, in the There's white, which is, you know, purity, innocence. Um, we, we talked about that in peace. And then liberty kind of ties in with vigilance and justice, so that was good there. Good guess. So now that we looked at all the steps again. Step one, identifying the object. Step two, seeing what's on the object, the stars, the stripes, and the colors. And then the significance. Why is that important? Why do they choose that? Okay. Cool. So now we're going to do this with one of the objects in the book, um, which is Hans' accordion. Now let's do a brief recap. What? Why is this uh, accordion involved in, in the story here? What? Well, first let's start with the uh, denotation, which is the exact definition. What is the accordion? Musical instrument. Awesome. Uh, what does it look like? Yeah. So there, I think I think there's a strap of some sort to hold it up. But yeah. So it's like it has those piano keys. It stretches. How to like the duration oh. of notes? Oh, yeah. Wait, are you or, sure it has piano power? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. The yeah. 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 Two straps, and it's used to play. 
Where, where did Hans get this accordion? Okay, um, so you're right. Um, do we remember the name? Eric. Eric, yeah. So we got it from, gift from Eric. Um, why did, it, so it represents their friendship, right? Uh, what happened to Eric? Yeah, so he, he died in uh, in the war, um, and he he, uh, he saved Hans from going in, into battle. Um, so there, there's that, right? There's that friendship that they have together. Okay. Um, so again, uh, we have the denotation. Um, what about the the con connotation, like cultural meaning? Um, back then, there wasn't a lot of technology, right? So, what, what was used for entertainment? Music, yeah, so that was one of the things. Um, so, the accordion was a way to like play that music and, and, be, and be happy and, and kind of escape the world. Yeah, it's another like activity or hobby. Yeah, yeah good. So, yeah. So, why is it important? Why, do we, why did we choose to talk about the accordion? What might it symbolize for Hans? Story life. Like remembering the friend that died. Yes, good. Yeah, so we have his life. Uh, well, Eric's life, remembering his life. It's a, it's a memento. Yeah, memorial. Um, well, I was thinking more of like it was his. They were going to put his life. Was, it was like basically like the accordion. He was given that life. So it's a it's a gift. The gift of life. There we go. So connecting that there. Good. Good, Cruz. Yeah, you're on the right track. So it's a way of escaping creatively. It's it's looking not, back. Yeah, you're right. You're right on the money. Yeah. So it's it's getting that uh, getting that escape um, from from what's going on in you know their crappy lives because of the Nazi regime and and uh, reminding himself of the good times. Well, I mean, it's a war, but he reminded me of his friendship with Eric, and and playing that music is, is that escape. I also feel like it's uh, it, like it is a symbol for his duty that he has to be able to respond to the duty and that he owes Eric something for getting him to the good part of the Right, yeah, so good. The sense of duty, like it's an obligation, because like now I need to return the favor because I didn't care about him that much. Um, so tying to that, what Bobby is saying, what's Max's importance then? How does Max relate to the accordion? Other than he's the son. So you're talking about how he has debt to pay, right? Yeah, good. So uh, the, the, like Bobby's saying, Max is harboring Max as a way of not only is it the right thing to do, but he's returning the favor because Max is Eric's son, and so Eric cares about his son, just like Hans cares about Liesel, and, and they both care about the accordion. And then they, these two, Hans and Max, bond over the music of the accordion because that was Max, that's Max's father. And their connection, Max. Their connection. So it all, all ties with the three of them, or with the accordion, Max, Eric, and Hans. So that's good. Questions, comments, concerns? On thumbs up, thumbs down, on on Hans' accordion, how he came up to those three steps. Okay. I'm seeing thumbs, which is great, but I need to see more. Everyone vote. Okay, this side's really good. Okay. People in the back. Okay. Awesome. So we also have that image, which is also important. There you go. So make sure you have an image as well. Um, you can see what your uh, what's being represented. 
So now I'm going to give you the rest of the time to work on our symbolism project that I've been previewing uh, previously in the week. Um, you're going to choose a symbol, um, and you're encouraged to, uh, well, actually, you're, so you can't use the accordion. You mean anything else in the book, from prologue to part five. Uh, I'm going to draw the template here. People who wanted to take notes on this, are you good? I'm going, to, I'm going to erase this part of it so I can. Okay, awesome. So, this is my expectations for this project. I'm going to need some sort of image. I'm going to, using Hans Accordion right now. Something, something like this. the keys, different shapes, right? So we have the image of the accordion. We label it. Um, then so this this is the like step zero. Step one, you're going to talk about the denotation and connotation. Step two, characteristics, what do you see, what colors are being used, why you think they're being used. So this is all like the physical stuff, what you see, what you hear, smell, taste, etc. You're going to describe it for me. And then lastly, you're going to provide a quote. Um, so this way you can look at the book, as part notes as a reference, um, so where I define the book and its significance, how it ties, this is step three, how it ties into the book. The book. Okay, it's uh, 15 points. I'm going to you to the end of tomorrow and the school day tomorrow's turn again. Uh, we'll see how where we are at uh, the rest of this class of time. And all this can be set in time tomorrow. Questions, comments, concerns, and what's expected of you. Rubric thoughts on the campus. Um, so, preferably a quote, but if you're not going to use the PDF, that's fine. You can use part notes as like paraphrasing uh, where it is. So, either one, but like as long as I'm able to, like, if I'm able to find it somewhere in the events, then it's good. We want to be able to clearly see that you're connecting that symbol to something or an event in the story and character. Some, there's some actual connection there. So, some yeah, sort of evidence well, to tie back a specific plot point or quote. Whatever it means. Yeah, while it may be not, there is no right or wrong answer so long as you are able to use evidence to support your yeah. symbol. Yes? So, we're like, why does one be bigger than the other? Yes, um, I know, so, right? I mean, have a, <laughs> I know, literally. There's paper and hand sanitizer up there for you. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to, I don't know where I'm going to put you know, I'm going to put this over here in the corner. Um, hand sanitizer is right here. You got some markers and pencils if you need them. Um, we have printer paper, notebook paper, you can use either one. Um, and then to submit it, if you're hand drawing it, you just take a picture and submit that file. How long does this whole thing do? Uh, good question. So based on the you know, based on all the stuff I'm expecting, it should be, a, I would say, at least a paragraph. Um, five, sen five to seven sentences. You can do it detailed. In, in bullet points. Yeah, really we're looking for a clear understanding. So there's not like a specific amount of writing necessarily, right? But like as long as you can clearly identify the denotation, the actual piece itself, the physical characteristics, and then how it's relevant to the story, that's what we're looking for, right? So we're trying not to limit or like set those bare minimum extra. Like we don't want to give you a, a minimum because it, it's kind of hard with this project. Yeah. Alright, so I'm going to do the rest of the time to work then. Um, this time is yours. I'm going to be coming around. If you have any questions or some inspiration, that is one here. Where is the assignment on Canvas? Yeah, just um, it's not necessarily on campus, but once I know it's right now, it's going to be able to find it. Yeah, yeah, you 
as long as you can wrap it up with all those things. Yeah. to like quickly present as long as you know, say all the things that you put on it basically um, and defend why you chose that object for like a minute or under um, and uh, you'll get a bonus point on your project. Even if you get full credit, you get a bonus point. This is rare people. I don't give extra credit. You know this. Like literally zero extra credit. For them. So I'm giving you a bonus point. Big.
If you also have any previous symbolism notes, that is also welcome to be used as well um, if, if you'd like to help with this project. Again, I shouldn't see phones out unless it's music. So that was actually going to be in a few seconds, so we don't have time for presentations today, uh, but we'll do it first thing after I give you some time tomorrow to work on it some more. Um, really quick, 
Do you are understanding the symbolism in the project of what, what's expected? Okay. Cool. Other than that, when the bell rings, have a great day, guys. See you tomorrow. No, they put like salt, salt on their arm. Oh, and they yeah. Put ice on but you put, oh, you put salt first, right? And then you would put salt the and then ice, and then you hold yeah. it there. I, I don't know. I think it. Bro, I remember back then, it would like freeze your like skin in chunks. It's like dry, it was like dry, yeah, dry it out. Like, dude, I have a scar for this. I remember that shit. I never did it. I was a chunk.